Hi guys, this is Joel Webb and I'm just so glad to be here today talking to you. I wanted to take just a moment because throughout my work history, people have often asked me what the difference is between an insurance job and a bid job. So I thought I'd take a minute and just explain the difference. In a nutshell, a bid job is a self-paid job that you are contracting out. It has a defined scope and you are getting bids on it. And an insurance job is effectively done with a contingency contract or agreement. Now I know what you are thinking, what is a contingency contract? Why would I want to do business that way rather than just get estimates? Well, in order for me to answer this, we need to do a little history lesson. Some of you may be old enough to remember a time when insurance companies would just ask you to go and get estimates for your damage and then allowed you to choose which company you were going to use and then paid you their invoice amount whether you did the work or not. These obviously were the good old days because a lot of people were able to pocket insurance amounts and negotiate lower fixes after their payouts and all sorts of stuff, but that's where the problems actually started. You see, these little storms called hurricanes came and wiped out a ton of these older homes off of their foundation. And these people got paid, but just never did anything about it. The majority owners of those homes that were paid for were not those people, but they were actually the mortgage companies. And so you can imagine they were not happy about their investments not being repaired. Let me stop here and just throw out a little disclaimer. This is very important. I'm not a licensed insurance agent, nor am I representing myself as one. I am only speaking to the many years of experience that I have seen while working insurance paid contracting jobs. If you want definitive information about your policy, please reach out to your licensed insurance agent. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, when all these people pocketed the money and didn't do the work, there was major insurance reform that occurred, and this is what they did to fix it. First, if a mortgage is on a home, they now require the mortgage company's name to be on all payment checks, and the mortgage company will not release the money if the work is not completed per the insurance scope of loss. Second, insurance companies now break the payout of a claim into two parts, the ACV, which stands for actual cash value, and the depreciation, which is only released when a contractor submits to the insurance company a final invoice showing that all the work was complete. And you only get that depreciation if you have a policy that has replacement cost value, or RCV coverage. Now, before your eyes glaze over with all the RCVs and the ACVs and it starts going over your head, let me give you an easy example. Let's say you have damage to your roof and an insurance adjuster says the damage is $20,000 to have it repaired based on his estimate. And you're like, hey, that's a lot of money for this. But before he writes you a check, he looks at the age of the roof and determines its life expectancy should have been 30 years. And that right now it's currently 15 years old. So therefore he depreciates or he takes away 50%. So in our example, 20,000 minus 50% is $10,000. This $10,000 that remains after it is depreciated is called the actual cash value of the claim. But the deductions don't stop there. Then he sees in your policy that you have a deductible that is 1% of the insured value of your home, which is insured at, in our example, 300,000, which is $3,000. So he deducts that from the ACV, leaving $7,000. Now let's stop right there. If you have only ACV coverage on your home policy and not RCV coverage on your policy, this is all you're going to get on this claim. And you will not get the $10,000 depreciation when the job is complete. If you have RCV or replacement cost value coverage, you will have up to $10,000 when you get the job done and it's complete and your contractor has sent the final invoice. 
Notice I said up to 10,000. This is very important. And this is where most property owners get confused. They think that this $10,000 is a guaranteed amount. So they immediately go back to the mentality that they should start shopping for a deal under this amount to help them with their deductible or even to pocket money. But in fact, what their insurance company and even the paperwork that comes with your scope says is that they will pay the lesser of the two values between their scope's value of the claim minus your deductible or an estimate you receive's value of the claim minus your deductible. So this adjuster hands you the first check of $7,000 and tells you that you'll have the depreciation release when the job is done and says that it would be a good idea for you to get three estimates for your claim. That sounds reasonable, but you are now in essence just shopping for the insurance company to have savings and not yourself. You see, if Bob's your uncle contracting comes in and says, hey, I'll do the work for 17,000, your thought is, this is great. I will get the work done and with my first check of 7,000 and my second check of 10,000, I'll get the work done and won't have to pay my deductible. Wrong. Bobby's gonna do your work and then he will submit the final invoice of 17,000 to the insurance, to which they will happily release a depreciation amount of 7,000 to you, not the 10,000, which remember was an up to price. That plus your first $7,000 check leaves you having to pay your contractor the $3,000 out of your pocket, which is your deductible amount you agreed to pay with your insurance at the time of the claim. So the insurance only had to pay 14,000 instead of 17,000 for the whole claim. So you saved them $3,000, congratulations. The only way that this scenario does not happen is if that contractor sends an invoice that is greater than the amount he is actually charging and this is insurance fraud and can lead to big fines and imprisonment. <laughs> At any given time, your insurance can and will ask for proof of payment with front and back of checks, proving what you paid for that job. If you don't want to take it from me, all of what I'm telling you is verifiable at this link on the Texas Department of Insurance website listed below. So the next big question is, how did the insurance company come up with the $20,000 figure to begin with? In order for that insurance company to sell insurance in the state of Texas, they have to agree to price their claim using state approved pricing software like Xactimate, Integra, or SimSol. These softwares call and verify current pricing for labor and materials from reputable suppliers and update their price list every single month. With that in mind, one really should ask the question if an insurance company who ideally wants to pay as little as possible and is held to estimating software pricing has put this figure on the loss, then why would any contractor's numbers <laughs> be much less than the insurance numbers to begin with? Usually, this is because either that contractor has stockpiled materials from previous jobs or they are not using reputable suppliers. Let me explain why this matters. If that roof goes on and two months later it starts disintegrating or delaminating, you're going to want to file a claim against the manufacturer of that material and have it covered under the manufacturer warranty. The first thing they are going to ask in that claim is for the batch number of the order. And if your roof was installed by a mixture of leftover materials from other jobs or from a reclaimed supplier, there will not be a batch number for that order and therefore no claim can be filed and you are left paying for a new roof to replace. This stuff actually happens to people and it's very hard when we're called in after the fact and have to try and clean up these messy situations. This is why insurance jobs should be done with a contingency agreement and not be treated like a bid job. Contingency agreements basically say your contractor will do the work 
prescribed by the insurance adjuster in the scope of loss for the amount the insurance pays, plus your deductible. That is right, you are going to have to pay your deductible portion that you agreed to pay on the claim when you got insurance. And if there are items that the insurance adjuster accidentally left off the claim, your contractor will supplement the insurance, which is a fancy term that basically says they're going to send the insurance a change order. Example, the insurance pays to have carpet replaced in a room because of a flood, but forgets to change the carpet tax that hold the carpet in place, and they're soaked as well. Your contractor will make the insurance aware of the miss, and the insurance can correct the scope. This is clean and easy to understand and make sure that the contractor is not having to cut any corners and you're getting everything that needs to be done, done. Choosing your contractor now becomes about their reputation, references, years of experience, respect, integrity, and honesty, and less about if they can squeeze your job into this allotted amount of money you think you will be getting for this claim. Well, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that it has been very helpful and informative. And as always, if you need a good contractor with the qualities and references that I just listed, give us a call at Lifetime Commercial Roofing. We do residential roofing in the Dallas-Fort Worth surrounding communities, and our commercial division works the entire great state of Texas, and we'd be blessed and honored to serve you. Have a great day.